الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي هدى والصلاة والسلام على عباده الذين اصطفى خصوصا على سيد الرسل وخاتم الأنبياء وعلى آله وأصحابه الذين اجتبى أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم من عمل صالحا من ذكر أو أنثى وهو مؤمن فلنحيينه حياة طيبة ولنجزينهم أجرهم بأحسن ما كانوا يعملون وقال الله تعالى إن الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات سيجعل لهم الرحمن مدا فإنما يسرناه بلسانك لتبشر به المتقين وتنذر به قوما لدا وكم أهلكنا قبلهم من قرن هل تحس منهم من أحد أو تسمع لهم ركزا وقال الله تعالى أفلا ينظرون إلى الإبل كيف خلقت وإلى السماء كيف رفعت وإلى الجبال كيف نصبت وإلى الأرض كيف سطحت فذكر إنما أنت مذكر لست عليهم بمسيطر صدق الله العظيم Very respected and dear علماء and brothers before going into the topic i would just like to remind all of you inshallah that if you see i have recited three set of ayahs and the reason i recited all of them at this time is because Hopefully we will insha'Allah be able to talk about all three sets of the ayahs in connection with how a Muslim can adopt these things in his life. And then especially how did our Hazrat Rahmatullahi Alayhi follow these instructions we will look in at his life under the light of of these ayahs of Al-Qur'an Al-Kareem. Because if we would like to know about any person, what type of person that is, judge that person in the light of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And everything will be very clear in front of you. Where does this person stand? And therefore I chose these ayahs where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about certain very special qualities of believers. And not only of regular believers, of some high ranking believers. And see how Hazrat Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi fulfilled these requirements and achieve those status in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A person sitting in a library is studying books and this was his way of life day and night, a scholar of Islam is studying books day and night. A very poor man ends, uh, enters the library and he says to this man, this scholar of Islam, 
who have spent years and years of his life just sitting in that library over there and learning the deen, studying the books. He says to him, I have a question that is puzzling me. Go ahead and ask. This is his job. People go and ask him questions. But he's so much into his studies that does not like to put time in anything else. So just ask your question quickly and then I'll give you the quick answer and then you, are, you should be out of the library. Go ahead and ask your question. That person says, my question is very brief. My question is, what is the gist of all of these thousands of books that are in this library? So this man says, I have spent more than 20 years just in this library, studying these books. You want me to tell you the gist of all of these thousands of books in one word, in few words, or in few minutes? I cannot explain that to you. Brother, you have to go through the whole course to learn what's in the library. With so many books of tafasir, so many books of ahadith, so many books of fiqh, and so many books of many different sciences. There is kitab salah there is kitab zakah there is kitab al-sawm, there is kitab al-hajj, there is kitab al-nikah, there is kitab al-talah. And then you go into the tafsir of ayahs, 6,600 and more than that, ayahs of Al-Quran Al-Kareem. And then each ayah has its own background explanation, explaining each and every letter of the, ayah, of the words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How can I give you the gist of all of this in just few minutes? You have to go through the whole course. So he says to him, Mona, excuse me. If you don't know it, then you want me to tell you? So this Mona is a little upset. You're going to tell me the gist of the library? Look at yourself. And in that situation, he says to him, Okay, go ahead, tell me. He says, Mona, the gist of the whole library is connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where there is salah, where there is zakah, where there is fasting, where there is hajj, where there is nikah, where there is marriage, whatever that might be, trade, business, anything that you do in your life, through that connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are sitting with your children, playing with them, if any person in the world will look at you, will think that you are having fun and you are spending some time with your family, but if you have the right intention playing with your children, through that you will be connecting yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is why some of our mashayikh used to say, before we enter our home and spend time with our families, we correct our intention that we are going to spend this time with our families and make them happy because it's a sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So throughout the time that you are playing with your own family, you are getting the reward of fulfilling the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This is the gist of everything that we perform in our life, everything that we learn in our life, everything that we do in our life. Connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if you want me to tell you the gist of anything that we study about Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi and his life, when we study his biographies, you don't find anything other than just connect yourself to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Truly speaking, I try to study as much as I could of his life. Sometime, I even sit with my father, who have spent a long life with Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi. From early 60s, I think it was 62, that he went to Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi, and held unto him until he passed away in 1982. Many times I asked him certain questions to find out, how did he deal with that situation? How did he deal with this situation thinking that there was no way for him that in this day and age will be able to follow that instruction of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa that exact sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa but the reply that I would get would just put me to shock. 
so that just 